In this presentation, we will record a transaction related to a cash donation into our not-for-profit organization. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our not-for-profit company dashboard. We're going to head on over to our Excel file. Within the Excel file, we're going to be on the second tab. So we're in the second tab, second item, which says we have a fund drive. We got the uh, cash of the 189 7000 We're going to record this basically all as one transaction here. So this would be a similar transaction uh, every time we're going to receive, obviously, a cash donation. So this would be our primary type of journal entry if we're receiving cash donations typically we're going to be increasing if from a journal entry standpoint the two the two accounts affected will be the cash being increased so we have an increase to cash here the other side going to the contributions without donor restrictions and that's going to be kind of like our income statement type of account or our income account type for a for-profit organization recording that then cash going up on the balance sheet the other side then going to our income type of account so that's going to be our transaction we're going to bring that back on over to our uh, quickbooks file we're going to use our standard type of form to do that we're going to use the same form last time this is the standard more general uh, journal entry probably should have started with this transaction first right with this is going to be the, the, the standard here the sales receipt so we want to go into customers and then the uh, sales receipt this is going to be the donation form you'll recall it says sales receipt up top however when we print the form it will say donation because we changed that item in it then we're going to say this is going to be donor two i'm going to make a generic name so this is going to be the second donor we're going to say i'm going to add this donor as we go we would want the information from the donor their contact information to send them our newsletter and so on and so forth but for the purposes of the practice problem Donor 2 is what the name's going to be. I'm going to select tab. So let me type that in again. we got donor 2 tab. So I'm going to set that up. I'm going to use a quick setup. I'm going to say save on it. And then I'm not going to put an email. But if we had the email, then of course we could send this out more quickly. The billing address here. And then we're going to say that the date, let's make it the second. So we're going to say this happens on the second. And we're not going to have any tag. Payment method. We could say whatever the payment method will be. I'm going to say cash in our case. And then uh, here, note, last time we put it into this clearing account because it wasn't really a cash donation. It was actually something other than that. And therefore, we took it in and out of the clearing accounts. The standard options for the cash donation are either we put it into undeposited funds or we can put it directly into the checking account. Now, we haven't set up the checking account, so we'll have to set up the checking account. But if we had set up the checking account, it would be an option here. And we can set it up as we go if we choose to. However... Uh, typically, if you're if you're receiving cash donations, it's it's useful to use this unde undeposited funds. So we got the undeposited funds on this item, because then it'll go into the undeposited funds, and then we can go to the bank. We can imagine taking all that cash to the bank at the end of the day, putting it into the bank, and recording it in the system uh, as that lump sum into the system. That's beneficial because we want to be able to do the bank reconciliation and it's going to show up on the bank rec or the bank statement in the format of the deposit that we put in at the end of the day and therefore we want to put it in our system in the same grouping once it hits the actual checking account that will make the bank reconciliation easier so whenever you're thinking about deposits that's how your mindset wants to be how can i put this into my system here so it will match the deposits in the format that they will be seen on the bank statement and one method will often be to use this uh, undeposited funds. Now, if you are getting all checks and you're entering the checks like into the bank as you get them, then you may be fine just entering it directly into the checking account because, because that's how they'll show up on the bank statement and you don't need this added step. But if that's not the case, if you have credit cards, uh, you often have a similar kind of situation where you have to think about how you're gonna get those grouping of credit cards to show up in your system to match to the banking system and if you're collecting cash then typically you have the same kind of situation if i just keep on putting in five dollar cash amounts here i could probably tie it out to the end of the day but i, I would rather put it, make it go through the undeposited funds account so that's going to be that transaction i'm going to say the date i'm going to keep the same date on uh 010220 i'm going to make the product is going to be the donation same same item that we set up last time so the donation will then populate for us that item then is driving this donation to be going to the proper income account so the item will help us not to need to know then what's going to happen to the financial statements right it, the, the idea here being 
that somebody that doesn't have a lot of experience with setting up the item or with uh, knowing what happens with the financial statements can still populate the sales receipts and make collections. So I can imagine here I'm making collections during the day that add up to this amount uh, during the week or however long a month, however long it's going to be. And then I can easily make those collections and make the sales receipt or donation receipt here without having to know how to set up this donation. I just simply say, hey, it's the customer. Here's the donation receipt and that's it. And not having to know what's the effect on the financial statement because that will be driven by the item which we set up last time. So we're going to say this is going to be the 189.7. 189.7. And these are all going to be going into un, uh, unrestricted. So I'm going to say unrestricted. I'm actually going to put it into the unrestricted for the fundraising. So let's put it into the unrestricted category, the subcategory of the fundraising. Now also note that as you set up this donation, when we set up the item, it is possible to set up the class when you set up the item. And therefore, when you when someone populates this information, they won't have to know about the classes either. It should populate automatically as they enter this information into the system. What's this going to do when we record it? Well, it's a sales receipt, so therefore it's going to increase some type of cash account. In our case, the undeposited funds account. The other side then go into the revenue account. The revenue account being driven by this item, the donation item, which is going to be the, the contributions unrestricted. It will also put it to the class, which is going to be unrestricted so that we can see it when we run the report of the income statement by class. Let's check it out. Let's go ahead and save this and see what happens. So we're going to save this and I'm going to close this back out. I'm going to open up then we got the hamburger open. We're going to go down to the reports reports on the left side. We're going to open up our two reports balance sheet and income statement. So let's open up the balance sheet report. Let's run the report for the year of 2020. So we're going to say 010120 to 123120. Then we will run that report, run that report. And then here we have the uh, undeposited funds now. Now notice it's pretty much a cash account, but it's just not in the checking account yet. You can imagine us doing multiple transactions that add up to this amount, for example. And then we need to go to the bank and deposit it. And so that, that's what we're going to basically do next time is put that into the bank. The other side then is being included in the equity. It's included in the income statement. And so we're going to have to go to the income statement to check out the other side. I'm going to duplicate the tab as we saw last time. I'm going to hover over this tab up top, right click on it, duplicate that tab. So now we got the balance sheet on the right. We're going to go back to the left to open up the uh, P&L. We're going to have the hamburger open. We'll go into the reports on the bottom. Then we're going to be opening up the profit and loss report, the P and L, otherwise known as the income statement. So we'll open up the income statement. I'll change the dates up top once again. So we'll make this for 010120 to 123120. I'm going to go ahead and run this report. I'm going to close the hamburger. I'm going to hold down control, scroll up just a bit. Hold on a second. That wasn't control I held down. That was that other button with the four squares on it or something. So here we got that. We're at the 125. Now I accidentally opened the profit and loss by class. So let's open both of them. I'm, I'm going to right click on the tab up top again. I'm going to duplicate this tab. We're going to need that profit and loss by class. So I won't get rid of it. I'll go back to the prior tab. Open up the hamburger. And then go back down to the reports. Now the profit and loss by class. I put into the favorites, you'll remember last time. I put it into the favorites by hitting this little star. So that little star put it up into the favorites. It's actually going to be down here in uh, in in the, what do they call it, the business overview. So in the business overview, you have the profit and loss by class. Profit and loss by class, you probably want to put a little star by it because it is one of those items that you will use all the time and therefore it'll show up once you do so up top here. Then the standard profit and loss we can open up as well. So I'll open up the profit and loss. So we got the profit and loss by class. We got the profit and loss. Changing the dates up top and the profit and loss. I'm going to say 010120 to 123120. We'll run that report. Close up the old hamburger. And so there we have our contributions. Now note I, I labeled it as unrestricted here. And we'll also see it unrestricted in terms of the classes. Then we have the rent, and then that's going to be our net income. The net income then showing up on the balance sheet. If we go on over to the balance sheet, 
in the equity section, there's the income that's in equity so far. So closing up the hamburger here, going back to the profit and loss, let's take a look at the P&L by class now. Profit and loss by class, you'll see that we have uh, the, un the unrestricted at the 35.8, and then I put the other amount into the fundraising, so maybe I should put uh, this 35.8 into the, into the fundraising as well. And so let's do that, and I'll show you how, how we can make this adjustment fairly easily. So we can adjust which classes they're in fairly easily by running this report, then drilling backwards on it, drilling back down to the actual data input form. So we're going to go into this 35,800, and I want to change the class of it. So I'm going to then click on the transaction. That takes us back to the sales receipt, which is basically the donation form. And then we're going to be changing this. I want to change the class to the under the unrestricted but fundraising so I want to go unrestricted fundraising and then I'm going to save that item then we'll close th this back out and scrolling back up go back to our report summary so then back to the report summary so now we have and if I go back up and run the report again so there we have it so now we have the fundraising and we have the total unrestricted because that's a subcategory of the unrestricted. And then we have the not specified. In the not specified, we have the rent and lease because we're gonna t we're gonna need to break that out. We're gonna need to break that information out uh, by percentage. How we're gonna allocate those out, and we'll do that basically at the end of the month in a similar fashion as we just did to reallocate this class up top. Okay, so now the, the next report that we've been we've been running, I'm going to go back to the first tab, and I'm just going to open up another report, open up the hamburger here. We're going to go back down to the reports. And the other report that we've been, uh, we'll, we'll often want to have is going to be that uh, sales by customer report, which, and notice the sales by customer, they're actually donations, but I'm going to go down, we're going to use the terminology within QuickBook, who owes you money? No, we're going into the sales and now we want the sales sales by class we want sales by customer this time let's take a look at the detail sales by customer detail again this is an important report so that we can provide this information to to the donors so we're going to say that uh, this is going to be 010120 to 123120 run that report and now we can see you know donor 1 and donor two, there's our uh, sales, our contributions by donor. The, do, ignore this last component here. This shouldn't. <laughs> this is this is another component I was testing out on here. So, donor one, donor two. There's going to be the activity. The total of this report, obviously, two two five five hundred, adding up to the P and L, the profit and loss here, the two two five five hundred. So, if we go back to the to the uh, classes, that looks good. You can also see similar information if someone had a particular question by going to the uh, hamburger. Let's open the hamburger back up. If you go to the sales item here, then you think of your donors in essence as customers with relation to QuickBooks Online. So we would then go to the customer items. I would then close up the hamburger so we have a little bit more room. And then we can go into our information by customer. So if we, if we then go into our information by customer, we'll see the transactions there here's the sales receipt transaction you can then obviously go into the sales receipt you could print out that sales receipt uh, as needed from this location as well so i'm going to close that back out now i'm also going to be printing out the trial balance so you guys can check your numbers as we go so just note that the other report that is is worthwhile to note even though you might be using the financial statements most of the time and not the trial balance all the time is that if you go to the reports down below and we open up the trial balance. I typically just type it in there because they put it way down at the bottom in like the accounting area. So I'll just type in trial balance and I'll close up the hamburger and I'm gonna run this for 2020. So I'm gonna say 010120 to 123120. Run that report, so we'll run that. And there's our trial balance. Now this one's just a little bit easier for us uh, to see because there's not any subtotals that has both the balance sheet accounts and the income statement accounts. So all we have right now is uh, the undeposited funds, the the contributions unrestricted, and the rent and lease at this point. So let's stop it here. Next time we're going to be taking this information out of the unrestricted and making the deposit uh, for it, moving it on up to the clearing or into the checking account. We'll actually add a checking account as we do that as well. So that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.